And actually, I looked up info. Um, appeared in the early 80s, but was never adopted by any country for use. It reappeared in Finland in the mid-90s as the GG-95 personal defense weapon, made by the Gordon Gun Company. The gun is chambered in 9x19 parabellum, has a cyclic rate of 600 rounds per minute, and has various accessories that were offered such as a silencer, various capacity magazines, and a laser pointing device, which he has and puts in great effect. So you have Cobra, and this gun, I love this gun. I wish I would see Stall, if you do Expendables 2, bring this fucking gun back. Even if it's for a little bit. Get that gun there. So, uh, like the gentleman, you know, some machine gun, and he blows his shit out of everybody. People are coming in, it's like almost a siege movie where he's shooting people left and right, throwing fucking grenades. She's driving, he's on the back of a pickup truck with his submachine gun, mowing down loads and loads of bikers, these killers on bikes, going after him. He just, what a great score by Sylvester Lake. I'm like, that is my perfect Saturday morning, you know, or afternoon, night, anytime you watch it. Stallone with a badass submachine gun mowing down all these fucking killers. I'm like, go, you know, grade A fun. And then he gets to this, like, foundry, like this, after he's killed some people, and then he does the Rambo style cobra. Fucking these people up one by one. In great ways, like, this guy is almost like... It's almost like a, a Jason Voorhees. And in fact, he's picking these people up one by one. He, he's not doing it nicely. He sets a grenade up, shoots it. He sees some people in between. Puts the valve, has them burn alive. Does some dazzling. It's like, you have the right to remain silent. Throws a fucking match, lights him up. And you have that great uh, standout with Brian Thompson. And once again, awesome dialogue. To just, you know, it's like the system is civilized, isn't it, pig? Cause like, but I'm not. This is where the law stops. And I start. Sucker. But where you kill him, and the, the other girl grips him, and he's able to get him down, and Use her as a shield as Brian Townsend shoots with a shotgun. And I love the fight. Like, people complain about the fight at the end. I don't get it. You know, it's a brawl. You know, I'm not expecting, you know, who, 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 you know, I, I'm not going to, I don't want that. I want a brawl. You know, and they're going to use weapons. So, you know, beat shadow guy, tussling, and getting him stabbed, hitting him with his gun, and you talk about comeuppance. You shoot him, boom, he's dead. Break his neck, boom, he's dead. No, you shove him on a fucking hook to, for him to suffer like he made other people suffer. And he's screaming, ah, you know, on a fucking hook. Memorable. And the guy is suffering because he's got a big fucking thing through him. Not only that, you can let him die, but he's slowly getting into this incinerator to burn alive and then he just burn alive and then you know he beats the shit he punches Andrew Robinson in the prick gets on a bike with his girl rides off to Voice of America's Sons and then you have one of my favorite movies of all time Cold War honestly I don't find anything wrong with it the film is 87 minutes holy shit it felt 87 minutes, you get a lot of bang for your buck for 87 minutes. It's well shot, it's well edited, awesome score and soundtrack and songs. The cast do their jobs. Sylvester Stallone is extremely badass. Virginia Nelson, I thought, actually did a good job. I really don't find any problems with her. Because you want to see her in a shitty performance, watch Red Sonja. In my opinion, it's a shitty performance. This, though, no. I thought she was at, she did what she had to do. She was good. And she liked her in this movie. So yeah, I have no problem with Virginia Nielsen. Um, 
Randy Santoni as a partner was good. Andrew Robinson. Brian Thompson, an excellent bad guy. Uh, I mean, some info on the film is interesting. I mean, oh, fuck it, I'll just read it. Oh, I knew it off the top of my head, but fuck it. Um, you had that movie Fair Game with Cindy Crawford and William Baldwin. It was based on the novel Fair Game, and this was sort of based on the novel Fair Game, even though it doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. But everybody knows about how Cobra first came to be because of Beverly Hills Cop. Because uh, they want they got stolen for Beverly Hills Cop, they wanted to do a rewrite. And he put a lot more action, budget went up, they said we can't afford it. Stone was like, okay. Took his stuff, used it for Cobra. And, I mean, I love this film to death. I don't know what else I can say about it. To me, it's just, it has everything I want about it. I have a badass hero. I have brutal villains. This army of killers who do not fuck around. You don't have bullshit, you know. It's not like 10, 15, 20 minutes of bullshit, like drama and, you know... That really doesn't add up to anything. Like, sometimes people want to be artful, artistic in some of these movies. And it's like, dude, you're not artistic. Know who you are, and then go for it. And this film does. Great accessories. I mean, like, the car, the 1950 Mercury, the gun, the, you know, Jotomatic gun, submachine gun. Even the, the Colt 45 with the, the Cobra logo. It just, the opening where he does the statistics, you know... Which, unfortunately, probably has risen up even more by then. The Sylvester Slave score, that's like horror. The elements of like a horror slasher movie. Um, insane amounts of action. One hell of a fucking car chase. A great ending where just this fucking goes ape shit. And it's long. It's not fucking short. It's long. He's, he kills like 100 people in this movie. The ending alone, he kills like 30, 40 people. At least. Awesome bits of dialogue, you know. It's when law stops and I start. Or your disease and the cure. I mean, these are memorable dialogues. So, you got dialogue, you got the acting, you got the fucking action, you got the badass hero, badass villains. No Timothy Oliphant in this movie. You, you have the score, soundtrack, short, fast pace, 87 minutes. So... To me, this has everything I want in an action movie. And this is why I want, it's one of my favorite, not only action films, one of my favorite films, period. So yeah, I love Cobra the Death. And before I head off, I know some people will mention Cobra 2. It'll never happen. I know that. And don't say it will, because, dude, I mean, the guy that, he's doing The Expendables 2, even if he doesn't do that, which I think he will, but, you know, these other films, they're not, no one, even then, the studio would not finance a Cobra 2. No studio would finance Cobra 2. Rambo, Rocky, there's a big audience. Cobra, unfortunately, doesn't have a big audience. It, I think it was a, sort of a good hit when it came out, but it wasn't a monster hit. And, yeah, they're not going to do it. If they did, I think it'd be badass. You know, when Sloan was talking about how, you know, there was an inkling that he wanted to do a remake of Death Wish. I'm like, dude, you don't have to do Death Wish. You have a character that you can do that for. Cobra. It's very easy. Cobra has a, a girl, a woman, a new woman. And she gets, you know, raped and killed. And, you know what? You could have Cobra retired. You say his age? Okay, Cobra's retired. He's retired... He's leaving a life with his girl. She gets raped and killed. And he goes in the way he's going to go. Not this, you know, sneaking around shit. No, he's going to get his fucking guns, his fucking knife, his fucking sunglasses. So he gets some ass. He's going to do the old school way against this new school of bad guys in which they're... You know, it's almost like, you know, a little bit of 8mm. Not what, how you think, though. What I mean by that is that how, you know, those films where you delve into this underworld, 
it's, or like kind of like Dick Carter, where you delve into, you're looking for one thing, and then you find all these other things. So like, you know, he comes across like pedophiles, uh, rapists, murderers, you know, people who fuck with kids, and he dispenses some justice because you know he's, you know, they're the disease. And he's the cure, and that would be great. But uh, it's not gonna happen. But you know, I think it could definitely work. But yeah, I mean, Cobra. That's my review. Of Cobra, probably two, three parts, I'm sure. But I love the film to death. And uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite films of all time. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another random review. Love this movie. But thank you. And have a good night.